Welcome to MDCast by Tampa General Hospital, a go-to listening location for specialized physician-to-physician content and a valuable learning tool for world-class healthcare. Difficulty swallowing can dramatically affect a person's quality of life, but plenty of surgical options are available. To walk us through our choices and get you back on the path to easy and effortless swallowing is Dr. Christopher Ducoin, Chief of the Division of GI Surgery at the University of South Florida. Welcome to the Tampa Generally Speaking Podcast, a go-to listening location for specialized physician-to-physician content and a valuable learning tool for world-class healthcare. I'm your host, Caitlin White. So, Doctor, what an interesting topic we have today. To start us off, tell us some reasons why a person would have a hard time swallowing. So there's so many different reasons someone can have trouble swallowing, from just the mechanics of how you eat and chew to actual physiological pathology, such as hiatal hernias, where the stomach's jumped up into the chest, or diverticula, which are outpouchings. Um, Even strictures can cause uh, difficulty swallowing or eating. And the strictures can be multiple things from benign strictures, which, you know, sometimes are just old scar tissue to even cancer. So there's a whole bunch of reasons. And I think part of our job is to figure out why that stricture is there or why that pathology is there and then to be able to treat it. The goal is to be able to treat everything and get people back to eating and swallowing normal. Beautiful. So we're going to dive into some of those you just mentioned right now. Let's start off with a stricture. Why would one of those form? Yeah, so strictures can form for multiple reasons. It can be anything from a decreased blood supply to just kind of abnormal pathology, something you're born with, which is like a web or or kind of like the way the mucosa of the esophagus comes together. And then they can be related to cancer, too. Uh, They can be related to previous surgery. Strictures can even come from when pills get stuck and they kind of get stuck chronically and then the stricture forms over time. You also mentioned diverticula. What does that mean? Yeah, diverticula. We usually think about things like diverticulitis and diverticulosis. That's diseases of the colon. When you get a diverticula of your esophagus, it's like an outpouching, but instead of a whole bunch of them, there's usually just a small little outpouching, usually in the upper or lower portion of the esophagus. Sometimes we get them in the middle, but they're usually just one diverticula or one outpouching, and they can be caused again for multiple reasons. But usually it's when the muscles of the esophagus are too tight and don't allow food to pass. And how about achalasia? I've never heard about that. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so achalasia is the same thing. It's when the muscle's too tight. Now, so when the muscle's too tight at the bottom of the esophagus, it won't relax. And achalasia starts to happen. We don't really know the why, why we get achalasia. We know what happens. The nerves to the esophagus stop working. So usually when you eat something, your food will kind of move from your mouth to your stomach in a very controlled manner through the esophagus. Then there's the muscle at the bottom of the esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter. It stays tight all the time so that the acid in the stomach doesn't reflux back up. When you eat something in a very controlled manner, it goes from your mouth to your stomach and that muscle relaxes and then allows the food to bolus to go by. With achalasia, when those nerves aren't working, there's no controlled peristalsis, no controlled movement of that food from the mouth to the stomach, and that muscle at the base of the stomach fails to relax, so it's tight all the time. So achalasia is really like the the failed workings of your esophagus. And again, we've got multiple ways we can treat that too. Gotcha. Now, looking at GERD, that's often associated with stomach issues, but how does GERD affect swallowing as well? Great question. So GERD is reflux disease or gastroesophageal reflux disease. And usually GERD in the world I live in, which is the surgical world, is related to some sort of defect or issue with that lower esophageal sphincter where it's too loose. Most common cause is because that stomach's been sucked up into the chest, that hiatal hernia. So again, it can lead to like a fair amount of acid creating from the stomach up into the esophagus. It can kind of burn that lower part of the esophagus. And you can get things like Barrett's disease or even cancer when the cells start to change. The way it would really affect one's eating is, again, what we call a benign peptic stricture or benign stricture of the esophagus. It's just a whole bunch of scar tissue and inflammation that distal esophagus that forms secondary to all the reflux disease. Mm. And wrapping up here, doctor, can you tell us a bit about esophageal cancer and those treatment options? Yeah, so esophageal cancer is a tough one. It's usually a glandular disease of the lower part of the esophagus called adenocarcinoma or more like a a squamous cell, like a skin at the top part. It's It's a pretty intense cancer. 
So it's usually treated with staging for CT scans and ultrasounds to, to see how much it's progressed. Almost always, when we're talking surgery, it's first treated with chemotherapy and radiation and then a surgical resection. But we're getting so good at early detection and, and kind of screening mechanisms for esophageal cancer that now we're even able to treat it sometimes in very, I'd say, unique and special instances with endoscopic or transoral surgery to remove, resect, or ablate that tumor. But most of the time, it requires chemotherapy, radiation, and then a large operation where we actually remove part of the esophagus and rebuild it with the stomach. I usually describe it as not just a big oncologic cancer resection, but almost like a transplant case too, because we're going to now rebuild the stomach in the shape of the esophagus and transplant it into its old place. Well, doctor, thank you so much for your time today and for your work in this field. Thank you for listening to MDCast by Tampa General Hospital, which is available on all major streaming services for free. To collect your CME, please click on the link in the description. For other CME opportunities, including live webinars, on-demand videos, and local events offered to you by Tampa General Hospital, please visit cme.tgh.org. And thank you.